Everything okay, guys? Yeah. I did not expect to see you here. I uh, brought so many animals. Yeah, it's very inconvenient, and I have to squeeze. Even the seat where I sit, there was a dog on top of my lap, <laughs> big one, you know, like 30 pounds. Wow. Wow. She thinks she's a lap dog, and she slept so well on my lap that I don't dare to move because I am I'm happy. I was happy that she sleep. If she want to wake up and do something or walk around, I'd be in trouble, you know, because I don't want to put leash on them in the car and. And the car don't have any space, you know. Don't have all the whole thing is is is, is for you know animal birds, a lot of birds. I adopt some more, <laughs> and then nobody wants to adopt it back, so I just keep them. <laughs> and also, they told me if I put them in the wild, they will not survive because mm -hmm. these have been with uh, humans too long. They don't know how to take care of themselves anymore. And last time I. One tried to run away. One small one like that, small. And he came back two days later, hungry, oh, thirsty. I went all over looking for her. She was so small, but so smart. Come back now. <laughs> I told him so many trees. I don't know where to get you. Oh, you have to come back. Uh, two days, you know, one and a half days. He came back, but don't go home. We'll stay in next next door. Quick! <laughs> Quick! <laughs> I can recognize. <laughs> Zah, she's here. I sent somebody come and really she was in the bush and like nothing happened. When he, she she see him, so, Quick! <laughs> Quick! <laughs> Quick! Quick! Like that, you know. And then when she came home, we put food. Don't eat. Like, mm, not hungry. <laughs> oh, I've been outside eating restaurant and all that. <laughs> First class hotel and whatever. And then we say, okay, maybe she's not hungry. So we left, you know. And lo and behold, I looked from the window, she was eating like mad. <laughs> <laughs> and when I, I was so happy, I come and say, oh, you hungry, you eat, this it tastes good. And she, <laughs> <laughs> we eat nothing no more. My God, I cannot believe it. And then when we run inside, you know, try to look through the hole, and she eat like mad again. <laughs> oh, so hungry, hungry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so actually, I was happy. I thought, okay, if God wants you to be free, that's what I want you to be. I, I would really be happy that you all can be free. You know, but I'm afraid you cannot survive. So if you're free, it's good, good. Go, go, enjoy. Well, one half day later, come back. <laughs> <sighs> then we have to take the dog to check up whether she has anything from outside because of wild birds and all that. But nothing happened. Probably she just stand around there all day. No, no, she went far. She went far. Somebody saw her. So we put poster and all that, you know, immediately. And somebody saw and called, she was on that and that area. You know. But very far. She doesn't have so much wing. I'll fly so far. My God, I can't believe it. But came back though, came back. Oh, happy. <laughs> and after she came back, she's so sweet. Oh, so sweet. Always stick around and don't want to go anywhere, you know. So funny. Seem like us, huh? We think we left the, I leave the house of the father and we're free. We come in, we do what we want. We're free will. We do anything we do. And then we end up having nothing, actually. You know, we have a lot of money, so what? And then we have nothing. We have a big house, a big wife, a big husband. No, 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 nothing happened. Nothing at all, really, really important. Huh? Anyway, what else did we say? What, 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 what? what? <laughs> Where were we? Uh, nice to see you anyway. Yeah, you're so nice, so kind, so good. Mm, so good. So many years, so good. It's still good. I'm very proud of you. I'm very touched. Every time I see you, I know I have to treat you the best, including scolding you the hardest <laughs> that you like. Some of you like. You know, some people like that. You know, if I don't scold them, they think I don't care. Yeah, some kids also like that. You know that, huh? If you have three kids, four kids are different. Some kids, if you scold them, they don't like. But some kids, if you don't scold them, they think you don't care, you don't love them, and you don't teach them. That's a problem. Yeah. And sometimes your neighbor look with a binocular, see, 
Yeah, and see you scolding your kids hard. You say, my God, what a marvel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? <clears throat> I also don't know what's the best. It's, I never do the, I saw that the best is enough, and everything is enough, but I can only do my best. <laughs> yes. I always think of you as the best, best people in the whole universe. <laughs> I always think how lucky I am, always meet such good people, so good, so good, and so kind, so generous, so big heart, and so loyal, and so highly spiritual, so intelligent, so wise, and so loving, so loving, so much love. <laughs> I don't know how good I am, I just know you are very good. Yeah, I just know I'm very lucky. Yes. So you're the best. I'm the best. <laughs> I do hope so, for your sake, for your sake, because what good is it if you are the best and get the, the worst master, no? <laughs> it doesn't match, right? <laughs> so maybe I'm also good, so we're compatible, huh? <laughs> Otherwise, you would run away and divorce me a long time. <laughs> okay, I'm so happy to see you. i see you again tomorrow. Gotta go and have a look at the, the pets, you know, the animals. They're so good, so good. My God, they're so good. You have no idea how good they are. So intelligent. And they speak English even. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Many of them do every day. I love you, I love you. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> Where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> Come here! All that. Especially if I, I bring out their favorite food. Oh, I love you, I love you. <laughs> and then fly over to get pick something, you know. Can you imagine? So small birds and talk English. <laughs> yeah, I can sing, can dance. Someone will sing, la 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 la. <laughs> All day. Yeah. And yes, we are not kidding. I don't even have time to, to teach them so much, and they learn by themselves. I put video for them, I put <laughs> TV, uh, tape, you know, I put the uh, photos. <laughs> uh, they're learning, yeah. Not as fast as you do, though, but they are yogis. Oh, they are good, good, good. They're good, they're pure vegetarian. <laughs> they're quiet, yes. They're very, very uh, obedient, a beautiful being speak English. I can't believe it's so small. There's someone so small like that also speak English. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I said, are you happy? <laughs> are you angry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they don't always do it when you want. <laughs> if you want them to do it when you want, and you have to spend time to train them. A lot of things they can do, and a lot of things they can speak, and a lot of songs they can sing. You'd be amazed. If we go to another country, could we even learn something so fast and so precise? They talk perfect English. I love you. Yeah. Even I, you know, like this. Yeah, not like I love you or I love you. I love you. Very clear, very clear. When you hear like that, you feel so warm. I don't even teach them. They just do it. Perhaps, you know, I keep telling them every day, I love you, hello, how are you? So they just do it. And they see me, hello. <laughs> and if I don't uh, pay attention, they keep saying, hello. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if I don't give them nothing, say, I love you, I love you, I love you. <laughs> My God, I, I talk so, sometimes they answer you, you know. Like I say, you like to come out? Yeah. <laughs> Something like that, you know. I say, oh, this is good. I like it. 
<laughs> yeah, thing like that, you know. When they answer you promptly, it's so fun, so funny, so funny. But uh, not always, they not do always do that. They do it when they want. Unless I train them hard, you know, like that way. But I don't care. Whatever they say, they say. Whatever they don't, they don't. It's okay. I don't need them to be, you know, superstar or anything. But they are, you know. Some of them can dance, you know, they dance for you. Yeah. <laughs> and whistle, like. Right? We saw very beautifully songs and all that and dance together. Beautiful. Okay. We go sleep now so that you can meditate tomorrow, no? Yes. Yeah, okay. See you, huh? That was the kiss of life. <laughs> Wake up the sleeping beauty. <laughs> I came this morning and caught you sleeping. <laughs> but that's all right. <laughs> I would be too if I sit here long enough. <laughs> it's so nice, huh? Are you very cold? Because I heard you coughing this morning. Oh, <coughs> yeah, some of you were coughing and uh, I feel so hurt. Really, I did, you know. I always do every time you come here or come anywhere, especially in winter. I think I have to get another place for you. Warm, you know, where warm, warm all year round. This is as good as it get already, but there could be a little warmer, you know? I'm sure I can get it. I sure will. <laughs> you have to buy like big hotel, you know, for thousands of people like this. What hotel? I mean, even, <laughs> even if you have one. I got to buy a ship, you know, a, a ship? No, a cruise ship. Yeah, yeah. Like... Titanic? No, not that one. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, I thought about that too. But then I thought about Titanic and I thought, oh no. <laughs> no. We, these are heavy karma beings. <laughs> I don't know if the, even the, the Titanic, just think about us, he sings already. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We just go back to the land. I'm thinking, I went all over the world, you know, to look for the places. I told you already, I really did. Some places, cheap, good beach, big land, everything. You couldn't even buy soy sauce. Uh, <laughs> or apple. You know, I don't mention where, you know. <laughs> 
Yeah, really, some places are so beautiful. But knowing that I have thousand miles to feed, I have to be practical also, you know. We can't just live on sea water and air, you know. Maybe we could. Miracle do happen. <laughs> yeah, for some people it's possible. But when we have a collective group of karma like this, you know, it, <laughs> it works differently, you know. For example, if somebody pray for a cake, yeah, it might come. But because the next door have a different karma, <laughs> so maybe only cut in half or maybe some twisted cake that you couldn't even eat. <laughs> Uh, so we come here together, share the different karma. Mm? Mm. So you you really warm and 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 good. Who who doesn't feel comfortable in the tent? Uh, raise your hand. I have solution. <laughs> what are you up? What are you laughing at? <laughs> no no no. <laughs> She said, no, no, no. What is so fearful about my question, huh? <laughs> oh my God, I can never talk to you anymore. <laughs> you know everything before I even open my mouth. <laughs> oh my God, that is, you are really enlightened, no doubt. <laughs> At least you can read my mind. <laughs> it's okay, sir. No, 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 no. <laughs> we okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> My God, you can laugh at everything. <laughs> yeah. I was in Mexico for a month. I almost lost 100 pounds. <laughs> almost. <laughs> that means I didn't. Yeah, okay. They don't have food so much. Oh, I tell you, the restaurant in Mexico. And it was in, in a very famous city, Cancun even. I went there because my visa expired and I was in a rush to go somewhere. I had to go somewhere, <laughs> you know. And then, by the way, I end up in Cancun. It's the nearest the, the ticket that I can get before my visa, you know, run out of order. So I run over there. It was good. And I tried to look for a place to actually, I tried to look for a place there and then it doesn't go well. I go somewhere else. I almost buy a place there too. But then I... I went to a restaurant every day and there's nothing to eat. They don't know what vegetarian is. There's one restaurant they call vegetarian. Oh, fine, good. But they have eggs and all that included. Okay, that's never mind. We can pick something out. But they don't have anything else. The mashed potatoes and some sausage, that's fine for me. Even I eat that every day, it's okay. And they have two. One is sausage with mashed potato. Another one is beef, you know, like vegetarian beef with mashed potatoes or rice. The rice, you know how the Mexican cook, you know, they don't even cook it. They just dip it in hot water and make it warm and then put it out for you. <laughs> so that's how they cook, you know, they, uh, the, I think the Latin American, they cook rice like that. Huh? The half cooked. Like the French, they also do that too, to make salad, no? Okay, you, I know. <laughs> Luckily, I live in France before, otherwise you think only the Mexico does it. Anyway, so the rice I cannot eat. So I order mashed potato and that beef, and tomorrow, alternatively, you know, with the, the, the sausage, which is very rare to find, or I have to go uh, like half an hour every day to go eat there and come back. Hotel not allowed to cook, and I didn't bring anything to cook, okay? Anyway, listen to this. First day, fantastic. Oh, okay. The mashed potato is real. The second day is kind of softer than yesterday. <laughs> the third day, oh, it's more than soft. It's like a milkshake. No, I'm not kidding. Third day, it's like potato soup. The fourth day, water, water running all over. And the beef, there was a big piece like this. And the second day, become half of it. Third day, one third of it. For a just a little, you know, like corned beef <laughs> sprinkle on top of my mashed potatoes. I don't understand this. I really don't understand. And I give so it's a good tip, you know. I'm a generous in the restaurant. When I was a student, I used to work in restaurant, you know, as hostess. You sit people, you know, on the table, and they give you a tip sometimes, but most people don't. So I used to love people who give tip and don't love those people. 
who did not give tip. <laughs> I didn't practice Guan Yin method, I'm sorry. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> so, of course, you want to be loved. No? Once you work in there, you know what it's like. So I give generous tips. Still, the, the potato don't change. <laughs> oh, I mean, it changed, for, not for the better. <laughs> and the beef suddenly changed, out of shape, <laughs> become like sprinkle, you know, <laughs> on top of that. So I'm getting more and more hungry every day. <laughs> and then my visa run out fast, because they give you only one month. You could extend, though, I heard. But it went so fast, I forgot that to extend, you know. So by the time I look at it, it's only time enough to jump on the airplane. Because <laughs> it's weekend, you know, if you wait until Monday, you, you become like expired person. And maybe live there illegally, and then you might never be able to get in again. I don't know. Yeah. I forgot time so easily. I forget what day it is, unless I have something to do, a look in calendar, or I don't know. Anyway, so that's that's that, you know. It's um, but it's a beautiful place there. The sea is wonderful. Uh, so like this. So because I was thinking just to invite the contact persons, you know, to another place, not here, because there's only hundred something people. I could take care, you know, like go near the sea somewhere, you know, and stay together every day, swimming. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, that's original intended. But if your zip broken, is everything broken? <laughs> what can I do? <laughs> yeah, it was intended, you know, like that. Even if it's not, uh, it's winter, but if it's the sun is out, you can always swim for half an hour or so. Or even just swim for ten minutes, it's nice. And run around, you know, in the sun, yeah. But that that is, we cannot do with a big group like this. Or maybe we just do that for 100 here, 100 there. And uh, if we want a big group, we have to come here or go in the thousand acres. Maybe I, I dispatch some of the feng shui people again, huh? <laughs> yeah, why should I work for nothing, huh? They can do it. These are, uh, I don't need too much of the spiritual knowledge. <laughs> yeah? All they need is just a shell of a, of a turtle <laughs> to divine, yeah? It's okay. Well, I don't know. Maybe we'll see about it. Originally, we wanted to move there, you know. But then we don't have any building there at all. First, we have to have water and electricity. And we, ha we have to have enough for a lot of people, you see what I mean? Otherwise, if we use a generator, we have to keep filling in too much gas all the time, and uh, it costs three, four times more than the normal electricity. Yeah, and sometimes it go kaput on you, and then uh, so you just uh, put your soaps on, and then you shrink. <laughs> uh, we expect to develop, you know, but we all become sh shrunk. And you say, honey, I shrunk myself. <laughs> you watch film? Yes. Yeah, okay, good, good. Yeah, some of the films I recommended are very old because I didn't have time to watch films at that time. So sometimes they bring it and they say, oh, this is a good film, so we watch together. Sometimes they recommended me, I did not watch, but I know it's just a kid's <coughs> film, so it should be okay, you know what I mean? Like from Disney, yeah? So I should say, okay, but it doesn't mean that all the film I say you can watch is uh, uh, pleasing to you. It might be too tedious, maybe too kiddy, yeah? So uh, you, you watch if you like it, and you continue. If you don't like it, you know it. You don't have to eat the whole cake to know if it's good, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. Besides, uh, people have different tastes, you see, so I don't just recommend what I like. But sometimes I thought the general public would like, or the famous film that I don't like, that I don't watch, but I know it's okay and people would like to watch. Okay, so I'm not like a dictative person. I know, I, I don't like this kind. What's gone, let it be gone. We have enough misery every day now. We don't need to watch another misery for a hundred years ago or something like that. We deal with daily problems.
you know, I don't like this kind of miserable film. But I know you would like, some of you would like, many, and it wins a lot of Oscar, so maybe it's worth seeing, you see what I mean? But I did not watch, I still don't want to watch. Knowing the story behind it, I don't want to, to shed tears again, you know. I want to be happy. I want to know what we're doing now and the future. I don't want to keep bringing back to hatred and violence and sorrow and the things that we could not change, right? It's just my, my small personal opinion, but I, it doesn't mean the film is not good. I just don't like miserable film, <laughs> no matter if it's true or not true. I like happy film. So most of the film I recommend to you are happy, happy film. Yeah, because this is a film I like also. But sometimes uh, when there is some, some uh, educational uh, purpose, I also recommend one or two films. That is not very happy, happy, <laughs> but it's good, yeah. But I, I do not like the true story, which is too miserable. If I know it, I would not, I would not watch. If I don't know, then of course I might watch it, yeah. In case uh, he, he, he want to make my film, <laughs> we better tell him that he's okay. No, he's okay. His film are fantastic. His film are good. Most his film are good, good, good. Have purpose, you know. Have purpose. But, who I wish I spare myself of this film. He want to, he want to educate people that war is bad and hatred is bad, which is good also. I know already, so I just don't have to learn it. That's all, you know. But many people need to learn this, and it's cool. It's cool film, yeah. It's cool. Mm. All right. And besides, they have very special effect and all that. Anyway, to see the actual film making is nothing compared to the film itself. So you better never go to any studio and look at it. That's the reason why I am not a movie star right now. <laughs> I did went into some film studio and do some small part. Yeah, and they call me again for a bigger part. <laughs> You know, I was just one in the crowd that you don't even see. I'm small, so small also anyway. <laughs> you have to have, you know, like those who watch the star, those uh, star binoculars in order to even spot me somewhere, even if you're lucky. But I was there, you know, I was getting, I got paid a 70 German mark hey, per day. <laughs> And it was three days, I earned 220, and I had food and drink and free makeup every five minutes. <laughs> yeah, really, they touch you up every five minutes. I don't know what for, my face already as thick as a pancake. <laughs> and knowing me, everything just sticks on. Look at you, <laughs> you stick forever. <laughs> So I don't know why they keep touching up, you know. Yeah, and at that time I was still young and beautiful, so there's no need even to make up so thick like that. But all the actors and actors, I don't know, they put so much layers of makeup on. They almost change your face completely. If I were walk out at that time, you wouldn't recognize me. <laughs> you would tell me, do you have an ID? You know? <laughs> and you ask the hoofa to come and chase me out because I made up too much, <laughs> for example. Uh, it's funny. And all the film, movie? No, 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 no. I told you, I think I told you once, which movies. The Slung and I, The Snake's Egg. It's from Inger Berman. Yeah, that was the first film he made. Yeah. But I told you, you have to need a star binocular. Yeah. Uh, 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 David Carradine and uh, Liv Ullman. And he, ke he saw me and he said, mm. Yeah, I was so shy. <laughs> yeah, if, if, if it's me now, I would come and, and ask for autograph or something. But he wouldn't remember me. I met him again now, he's older. I met him once again in the star party in Los Angeles. He didn't remember me at all. Yeah, but he liked me at that time. I guess because he's much into Kung Fu, and I'm the only Asian looking there. <laughs> yeah, if you're at home, you know. <laughs> I guess if you're at home, he keep looking at me and do like that. I reminded him, but he, he couldn't remember. 
I guess he remember afterward. He said something. Like, I don't know. Maybe he didn't remember. I'm just one of the many. You know, we have big crowd. You know those extra, extra, extra. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, like if if they make movies with a big building and all that, they're just a wall, and the bricks is might not be even real, and they make window frame and all that, and they put a high platform something for people to sit behind the window. And it looked like you sit inside the building, but actually there's no building at all. And they just make a short street or something with the, uh, you know, uh, how you say, tape on street lamp, you know. <laughs> and um, uh, they park a few old cars there, you know, those uh, made in the 20s, park them around there, or run around just a corner, bzzz, and uh, that. Yeah, and again, again, the same street, and <laughs> they make it look like, yes. And I was so disappointed, so almost heartbroken. <laughs> I was a uh, young, you know, an idealist, and I loved movies. And I imagine all these magnificent movies I've seen, you know. And uh, David Carradine also one of my, you know, favorite. And I can't believe it. They, it looks so, everything looks so ordinary and I'm like fake, you know, and I almost, I said, I don't want to play anymore with these people. <laughs> so since then, I, I don't want to be there anymore. Actually, I never wanted to be a movie star or anything, it just happened. And people just want to take my picture and the people just want to come see me and ask me if I want to, to play something in the movies, yeah. And there's another uh, movies maker. Uh, I forgot his name, but the the the, the stars of their movies want to take picture with me. They did take picture with me and put it in front of their premiere movies day, and put for many days until I passed by and I thought, huh? Oh, that's me. No, 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 no. Uh, can I have it back? <laughs> and I took it. I I probably still have it somewhere, or maybe in Germany. Yeah, it was in Germany. In Munich, yeah. They put it in front of the movie theater, me and the stars. The main star of the film. I even forgot the star name and the film. Can you imagine? I could remember after. Oh. Something Cleopatra. Cleo and something. Yeah. And the other guy, Wolfgang. <laughs> Wolfgang is plenty in Germany. <laughs> Yeah, I could remember if I think back, but I wasn't. Uh, I just met them once, you know, and they want to take picture with me and then put it in one of the movies here. I w I thought it was very kind though, but I'm very shy. What if people think I'm a movie star and then ask questions and then I'm not, you know? I feel like pretentious person. Is, oh, take, give me back my picture. <laughs> yeah, it's been there for weeks, and I did not know. Yeah, they. I guess they didn't mean anything, just want to honor me, you know, want to make me feel good. They like me, that's all. That would be an honor for everyone, huh? I was just too young and, you know, <laughs> they don't understand much of these things. I was just so shy because I think I'm not a star. I should not be in front of the movies there. You know, the picture like that, you know. Okay. Well, my goodness, what are we all talking about except spirituality? <laughs> Some new initiates must feel very <laughs> surprised. <laughs> yes. I remember when I was just started in Taiwan and it was a new year, New Year's Eve. I just finished the lecture and go back to my tent. At that time, we didn't have land, we didn't have home, we didn't have anything. I started, I, it grows so fast, I don't have time, I don't have money for my followers, you know, so some of the followers, they, uh, they want to be monks and nuns, because I was wearing nuns robe, you know, and they, they follow me, they want to be the same, like a renunciation, renunciation, renunciate. And so it's okay, we, we stick together, but I don't have any money to <laughs> do anything with them, you know, no, no, no house, so everybody have, not even everybody have one ten. I have one ten, of course. I'm the master, you know. <laughs> Besides, I snore. <laughs> no, I don't. I guess I don't. But who, who can tell? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, nobody's there to tell. 
<laughs> so anyway, what we did, three persons share one tent, you know, and it's, it's very tight, but at least it's warm, you know. And uh, sometimes you can walk by and know whose tent it is, <laughs> because if the toes stick out, <laughs> if you see a bulky, you know, at the end, then it must be tall guys, yeah. We put all the tall guys together, though. So you can see that the tent was kind of bulgy now, you know, <laughs> and one side, <laughs> or both sides. <laughs> and you can make out immediately where is the head and where is the toe. <laughs> it's very easy. So those days, it's like that. Oh, what am I talking like that for? Oh, okay, okay. I came back from a lecture in Pintong, huh? and we didn't have land, so we camped, you know, uh, on the riverside of Pingtung, mind you, we were lucky, because that river sometimes is just unpredictable. Any river, because any river, you never know where it comes from. So don't ever pitch tent <laughs> on the riverbank, even though the water looks low and it's not a rainy season, because it might not be raining there, but it rained where it came from. And it could be landslide, mudslide, and a torrent of water coming down, and then we'll be in trouble. We've been lucky many times. And you have been there also <laughs> once, <laughs> but it was okay. I made sure that it was okay. But if you are alone or with a group of friends, uh, don't don't risk, okay? Because I, I I was sure that it was okay, of course. Also a couple of lucks, yeah, and master blessing and God love, whatever you call it. So I came there and uh, you know, come back to my tent. And we don't even have uh, utensils to cook, you know. Everybody followed me so fast. I don't have a, I, I wasn't experienced. I don't have experience to be a master or being, uh, have disciple following everywhere, you know. And so I just buy more and more ten every day. <laughs> whatever, whoever come, if they have money, they buy ten. If they not have whatever I have, I buy ten for them and three or four share it. Uh, and then so we, we don't even have utensils, so we uh, um, light a bonfire, you know, collect wood, and we roast potatoes, yeah, and apples and whatever, and eat it. And uh, some disciple at that time just also come to see me. You know, they follow, okay, I welcome, and roast potato together, and we drink tea, and talk about how good the potato tastes, and that's it. This guy come home and criticize me. He sit there and criticize already. What kind of master is this? Sit here and talk about potato. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't eaten all day, all of us. And we've been working, you know, and all that. And there was New Year's Eve. We're supposed to have zhongzi, baozi, ah, you know, bread, pudding, you know. Sumptuous meal, you know, if we don't have chicken, at least we have vegetarian beef or whatever. Nothing. We just roasted something to eat and corns and all that stuff. And he sit there and criticize. Can you imagine? But we do that. We do that. We, when we're new, we're too idealistic, you know. He was idealistic, you know. He, he keep looking many years and he been he go into temple, be a monk temporary and all that, but he never found nothing. But he went to my lectures just once, and his sickness was healed immediately. And he feel warm currents all over his body, and he sit there in Samadhi. And he listened to my lecture, he read the book, the sample book. At that time, that's all we had, sample book. And he feel, my God, my God. He couldn't believe in this world that I was still a master like this. So he went immediately, even though he was very busy. He was the only son uh, working in that family, and the family rely heavily on him for the farm that they have. And he could actually n n not afford to leave at all, could never leave his house, but he said he couldn't care less, he has to go. And then he experienced such a good thing, you know. He, he, ha he used to have pain in his arm all the time for milking the, 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 the cow and the goat, and it was so painful and he could not even move his finger. And it's been for a long time and nothing can cure him. But he goes to the lecture and the warm currents run all over his arm and his body and then he's done, gone. And then he went into Samadhi. That's how he, 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 he liked it so much. And then he rushed, he ran after me, you know. 
we normally don't invite people there. You know, we have only a few ten. My God, already three in one. How many more can we accommodate? So we did not invite anybody, but he ran with us, you know. He came following. Uh, and another one also. And then, uh, and instead of thanking me, or whatever, the blessing power that runs through me, he sit there and don't even want me to eat the potato. He want more Buddha, you know what I mean? <laughs> he wants more of his Buddha. Well, of course he was very eager to learn, and who can blame him, you know what I mean? But just think of how dangerous to be a master. You couldn't even eat a potato <laughs> on New Year's Eve, when everybody have house and party and, you know, drink and eat. And He forgot all about that. He was so eager, you know. You cannot blame him, of course. But sometimes, be too eager can make you blind, you know. So take it easy, relax. That's how the Buddha would come to you. If you're so eager like that, my God. <laughs> ah, so take this for a lesson. Eh? Be cool. Eh? That's what they say in America. Be cool, man. Be cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <sighs> my bird, one of my pet bird, ran away once. I told you yesterday. Small one, yeah. He ran away, he wants to experiment the world, okay. And I'm happy. I say, if that God's will is good, I originally intend to free all of you anyway. And if you can be free, it's cool, just go. But by the way, because people told me that these birds are born in captivity, and they're fed by human hands since they were babies, and they look up on you as another bird mother, Yes, in fact, one of my birds told me that I'm a beautiful bird. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Yeah. He said he likes my attendant because he's this very, you know, soft-spoken, but he likes me because I'm a beautiful bird girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not kidding. You can talk to them. You can talk to them, but you have to go down. Level and it's still more tiring. You know. Only do it in emergency. <laughs> yes. So anyway, um, because uh, he say I wear colorful things and uh, you know birds they love colors. <laughs> the the parrot family and they love colors. I wear sometimes colorful necklace for them to pick on. I love that. Anyway, that so you know I mean I'm not kidding, huh? Okay. So anyway, this bird he went out. He enjoy. He like to enjoy the view and all that. But by the way, because people told me they're born in captivity and they cannot survive outside so easily. Um, one of the person make an experiment with a hundred parrots. He let a wild parrot integrate with these uh, uh, hand-raised parrots, you know, home-raised parrots, so that he can teach him from beginning how to survive before he let him out in the wild. But 100 parrots come out, only one survive. You understand? Therefore, I worry for this bird. Of course, I can tell him to come home, but I cannot force him. So we uh, distribute fly everywhere. He, she fly far. But then come back in one and a half day later. Yeah. Uh, and the reason uh, mm, we couldn't find her because she said, "You guys are so nervous and anxious. I'm so scared. <laughs> that what are you? What's the problem? You know?" So he was even nearby. He wouldn't let us. He wouldn't let us know. So of course I know where he is, but we couldn't just couldn't see him. Couldn't see her. I know where he was, and we went to that direction. And sure enough, some people call us later and confirm us that we. He, he saw her there, and she even came down to a bicycle person, and he has it in her hand. Everybody saw it. But then she fly again and again. Then she's very friendly. Of course, she can fly on to you, anybody. But then she flies again, uh, away again. And I was in the correct place and the correct direction. Just she hides, couldn't find it. And then she said, because we are nervous. We are too, too anxious. We to come on, you know, come on too strong. And sh the energy is too too sharp, too frightening. So she don't dare to respond. Yeah, but she come back alone later. And she don't go back home, go next door. Quickie! Mm. Quickie! And when she came home, we feed her, she don't eat. 
like, okay, I, I ate out already, you know. <laughs> but when we come inside the room and look outside, oh, she eat like crazy. <laughs> oh my God, eat, drink, eat, drink, eat, drink. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. Oh, I look at her, I feel tired for her, you know. <laughs> my God, so quick, chup, 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 chup. Eat, drink, eat, drink, like this. As if no chance anymore after, you know, like you're going to die without food. And I walk out, I say, my God, you enjoy. I'm glad you enjoy the food, honey. And she stopped, like, <laughs> she stops and look around on the air somewhere. Oh, weather is nice, you know. Quickie, quickie. <laughs> Nothing happened. <laughs> and I went back in the house again and peeped through the window. Chuck, 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 chuck. Eat, drink, eat, drink, eat, drink. <laughs> oh, so crazy. I can't believe this. I cannot believe birds are like that. I mean, I mean, I do know they are beings like us. I do know they have intelligence and soul. But still, to, it's still to my brain, to my mind, she's a bird. And still, you know, cannot be as crafty as us human beings, but mine, no, 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 they are, they are, they are. And my dogs as well, they teach me a lot, a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. They do that. I like that. <laughs> So the more you study them, the more you have to respect all beings because they really do know. They really do know. Many things they know that I'm surprised. They don't they play, they don't know, they don't care. Because they want to play bird and dogs. But when they have to defend for their own or whatever, like for example, you like a bone, honey? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and then run run to where the bone is and stay there. How do they know? What does it mean, bone to them? They know anything. Uh, normally, it's like, come here, come here. And if they play, they don't want to come. But it's like, you want to go out? Oh, yeah, yeah, run, 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 immediately to the leash or to wherever, the door, and wait for you. Huh? And don't tell me they don't know. They know everything. You know why? Even though if they don't understand English, when you speak to them, even if you don't have the, the, uh, you know, the ability to Convert, converse with uh, animals, when you speak to them, you form a picture in your mind somehow, and that picture is what they get. You see what I mean? So they understand you. They do understand perfectly what you say, except when they ignore you, they don't want to understand. <laughs> and that's a different thing. That's a diff I forgot what they all do to tell you, but they're really intelligent. They really understand and do it appropriately. Yeah. For example, my parrot, one of them, he speaks all day long, all kind of things, but he doesn't speak when I want him to. He's a man, yeah. <laughs> male. But that's not the point, okay? That's not the point yet. It's not the point. So whenever I come out, you know, they love peanuts which is forbidden food, they cannot eat too much because it's too fattening and not good for their liver. It's okay for a treat. So whenever I come out and I open a jar of peanut, he pick his head right away next to my shoulder. I love you, I love you, I love you. <laughs> I say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you love the peanut, all right. <laughs> like he keeps saying, I love you until I give him the blessed, Peanuts. <laughs> and then he stopped. And I say, I love you. Say it again. Nyum, 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 nyum. <laughs> nyum, 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 nyum. <laughs> Don't tell me he doesn't understand what I love you mean. Yes. And whenever I'm too far away and he wants to entice me, entice or entice? Entice me to him. I love you. I love you. I'm a good boy, good boy. <laughs> and then I, sometimes I'm busy, I pass by, I don't come in. Where are you going? <laughs> and then scream, ah! <laughs> and then throw the uh, uh, eating ball on the floor, bang! Yeah, even though he just eat half of it. Yeah, to show off, you know, that's it, you know. <laughs> he really knows what to do. Sometimes because in the beginning I pick it up and, and put it up again, you know, and tell him, naughty boy. So he, so now he knows. Every time he, he throw it, uh, uh, you know, on the floor, I would come and pick it up and talk to him. 
that's a trick. So I don't do it again. <laughs> I don't do that. It's, it's a reward, you know. That's what he wants, attention. But dog also the same. And if you even scold them, they like it. My, uh, I have a dog, uh, Australian Shepherd. Oh, even I scold him, he's so happy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he stick his tongue out and <laughs> all four, you know, shut my thumb up. <laughs> you can scold me, but scratch me, you know. <laughs> so happy, happy, happy. I say, I'm scolding you, man, I'm scolding you. <laughs> the more I scold, the louder, the more happy. <laughs> he does some naughty things, so that I come scolding him, running, you know. It's terrible sometimes. Oh my God. I say, I wish you guys do good things instead, you know, negative things for attention. So whenever they do negative things, just ignore them. It's better not. Yeah? I'll do it quietly, put him in a crate for, you know, for a penalty or whatever, half an hour, an hour, whatever. But don't scold, don't play, don't even look at them. <laughs> Another bird always jump down so that I have to come and pick him up and scold him. Yeah. So I, I read in a psychology book, you know, for birds. <laughs> yeah, they do have such thing. My God, if you have birds, you have to research, no? <laughs> Just like if I have you, I have to research on spiritual books and all that. Not that I need, but because you need. You read so many books and you crowd yourself with so many questions from that book. And against my book, for example. <laughs> you know, you remember the book, discuss the, the painting, discussion or argument, whatever. Yeah. So I have to read also in order to know what you're reading. I have to eat the garbage that you eat <laughs> so that I can tell you, yeah, <laughs> how can you eat this? You know what I mean? If I don't eat, how I tell you? That's the problem. Mm. So whatever I do is all for you. <laughs> I look alike, huh? look like you, huh? Yeah, because. <laughs> so the book of psychology of the bird saying that even if you scold them, you know, it's a reward for them. It's the attention that they want. They want to get you there, where they are. So now, you know, all you have to do is just don't look at them. When they come near you, you just tell them, come up, you know, in a stern voice, displeasing voice, and put them back in the cage, in, on, the, on the perch and don't look at them. That's it. So now they don't jump no more. Oh, rarely. They still jump for fun, but not like every time they see me out there, just jump all over, you know, jump down so that I have to come and scold them. <laughs> they love. <laughs> when I scold them, they go, quick, quick, quick. <laughs> <laughs> but some, some of them talk, you know. They even say, thank you. When I scold them, pick them up, thank you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> you know, kill me with, with, with kindness. <laughs> yes, yes. You don't know, my God, they are really, really so incredibly intelligent and, uh, and uh, you know, sharp. The mind, very sharp. Okay, so now, all this is just so to remind you that all beings are really, really are God. They have God inside. And their higher being will talk to you in many ways, but their lower beings still do all stupid things. Yeah, for example, if you talk to the dog, he will promise you, no, no, I won't do it again. I won't pee in the house again. I will try my best. Give me another week. That's the higher being. But the lower being continue to do it on your person, carpet, whatever. <laughs> Whenever he feels angry or frustrated with you or that you don't take him when he wants. Thing like that. So you just have to live with it because they're dogs. Yeah? Just like us. We're human. We're supposed to be more intelligent than 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 dogs or other beings, but we still do silly stuff because our mind distracts us. Yeah? How many times you feel something is right, you have an intuition for something, and you were going to do it, but then you look at the outside circumstance and your brain tells you, no, no, this is not the right thing, and you forego it. And later on you regret because that's exactly the thing you should have done if you didn't look at the outside appearance of circumstance, you would have done the right thing. Is that right? Yes. Similarly, you know, all beings, they do what they do because they also have a brain. And most animals, they have a, a, a younger brain than us, you know, like, for example, dogs, they have a brain of 10 years old, IQ. That's what they told us. But sometimes I'm surprised. 
Yeah, maybe they should have such a low IQ so that they, uh, you know, young IQ so that they can be loved unconditionally, like kids. Innocent. We grow up, people calculate too much. I love you, what do I get from it? You know, if I treat you nicely, uh, what is good for me? What is in there for me? You see what I mean? But kids, they don't calculate so much. Very little. You know, maybe for toys or affection, but there's not much. Not business-like, huh? So maybe that's why animals, they're so unconditional and so loving, so forgiving. You can scold a dog so badly or spank his bottom and he scream, but then he come love you next minute, right away. The minute you call, he comes. He forget all about what you did before. Yeah. Whether you are right or wrong, he doesn't mind. Whether you have a loud mouth or terrible garlic breath, he will kiss you. Yeah. He doesn't mind if you don't change your underwear for a week. Yeah, he don't mind. Huh? <laughs> That's why people love animals, because they're so unconditional. They don't judge you ever. Whatever you are, that you are the person they love, the only one. Yes. And nothing can change that. They would die for you, just because you say they're a good boy. Just one word, good boy, good girl. Many dogs, they use for rescue mission. They go into danger places, which humans don't dare go just because you tell them they are a good boy and you give them a hug, that's all they need and they would die for you. They laid out their precious life for you just because you tell them you love them, just because one were a good boy or good girl. I saw in the video, in the um, TV recently, I don't watch TV that much, but in some occasion when uh, events, you know, like 911, so heartbroken, I, I had to watch now and again to see what's going on. Because we are so involved, you see, we helped, we helped, yes. Uh, although they only think Americans help, yeah, but we really help from afar, from all over the countries. We pour in man, manpower and, 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 and financial to help. So we are so involved because we love, yeah, we love all kind. We also send money for Afghanistan, Afghan people. Not, not just American. But anyway, anyway, don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, also, I want to see what's the outcome, you know? If anything better, of course, nothing can be much better, but there's some touching story that make up for the tragic end, uh, events. And I saw many dogs, you know, they use for a rescue mission. Uh, they just walk in like nothing. But I feel so bad about them. At least they should wear some protective for them because they've broken glasses and broken stone everywhere. And they just let them walk in like that. It's, it's so bad. I mean, you could use dogs, but you have to protect them in that situation. I mean, all the people wear thick boots, you know, like this. And the dog just walk in with bare feet. My dog don't walk bare feet on the street even, unless we go out just for a short, like, in the gas station, they have to relieve themselves or something. But that's just like two meters. But if my dog walk even at home, I don't let them walk on stone. They walk on carpet outside. Because the grass sometimes also, you know, bad for their feet. So I use, you know, those, uh, uh, um, you know, not expensive carpet, just, you know, those carpet that you can buy in Home Depot and all that. I, I, I line all the road. Yeah, like carpet that you wear, you are sitting on. Yeah, I, I spread it all over on the stone where they're walking. Yeah. So they don't have to, you know, have uh, wounded uh, feet. Because this happened, you know. Some dog can have a cut in their feet. I have shoes for them too, but it's too much trouble to wear shoes. 20 shoes, you know, every time they go out. It take an hour and then they might pee on my carpet again. <laughs> and they hate shoes, they keep taking it off, you know. And it come off also easily. There are some shoes don't come off that easily, but by the time you put 20 shoes on and they kick and, you know, run and all that, so I put, just put carpet to go, you know, all the way into, to go to where they go to. And uh, that's it. When we go out, you know, they, of course, when we go out, we put them on the grass. 
but don't let them walk on the Ausfa where where the Aus Ausfa wore out, wears out, and then they they reviews those sharp small small stones. If you walk on that for a minute, you will know what I mean. If you don't walk, you never know. You think the dog's okay? Of course he's okay because you have shoes. You have shoes. <laughs> you don't feel anything. You understand that? So I don't know how they they. The training people let the dogs walk in the sharp, broken glasses or anything like that, even chemical leaking or anything, or, or germs or danger, you know, and let them go there. And these are precious dogs. They've been trained for years, and they even lay down their life for anyone at command, and they don't protect them. You understand how, how we sometimes are so insensitive? Even if he's a dog, but he hurts, you know. And he's a good dog even. He's going to do a job for you. And we need that dog for many more lives. Not just to sacrifice him there and then no more. Of course you can train more dogs, but that's not the point here. It takes at least half a year, continuous daily training for a dog to know what to do in different situations. And for a dog to act out intelligently by himself is also hard to find. Because you can only train in one like rigid situation, like a dog who smells drug, or a dog who smells people, or a dog who smell uh, 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 land mind, thing like that only, but not everything. Still, it takes a long time. But then you still have to protect that dog, my God. Huh? If you have a talented employee in your office, you give him rights, you protect him, no. But the dog, my God, nobody think anything because he's a dog. I don't understand. So if you have dogs, take care. Huh? At least our dogs, you take care for me. Okay? Well, the reason uh, God make me have all these dogs so that I know all this stuff. Otherwise, I would also not know. Truly, how do I know all this stuff? I'm not always on this earth and to have dogs. I came from somewhere else where we don't have dogs. Oh, we have dogs, but they don't need shoes. <laughs> and we don't have stone as pavement. We have velvet, we have soft gold, we have a, um, a road that is shining like a diamond, but soft like velvet. We don't need any shoes. You know what I mean? Oh, even we have shoes, it's just automatic, you know, just decoration and beauty. There's no need to sustain there. Hmm? But here in this, on this planet, we need shoes, and so, so do dogs. If you have only one dog, it's easy to wear shoes for him. My dogs, they love clothes. They don't love shoes. Because shoes, they, don't, they cannot feel the grip of it, that's all. Yeah. Uh, of course, the dog, when he walks into such an area, he needs to have a firm grip also, so the shoes properly desensitize his uh, sensing power also. But he has many other power, you know. If they train him well walking on shoes, they would be also well to be able to use it as well. Uh, no matter what, you know, he, he uses his nose more. And I hate it when dog has to walk into sharpness like that. It's terrible. Can you imagine? He's so delicate, small feet, you know. And he walk in there, the broken glasses everywhere, they just let him walk in. And not to talk about sometimes poison, you know, it might a smear on his leg and all that, and he might lose it for nothing. Poor man, poor dog, I can't believe people do this. It broke my heart any time. Ah, <sighs> but what can I do? That's why I don't watch TV too much. I will get mad. <laughs> I will get mad. I really get mad. <laughs> My temper already bad enough. <laughs> okay. Ah, yeah, my goodness, we don't meditate. Oh, we talk so much. What time is the food session? <laughs> Four? Four. Are you okay with food and everything? Yeah? If it, even if it's not okay, you bear with it, okay? You don't come here for food. Yeah? Understand the situation that we are in. It's good that we have food already. Yeah? And we have each other, no? Yeah. We have plenty of spiritual food to take home anyway, huh? 
and make sure if they short of something, make sure you remind them also. Sometimes they cook too much, too hard, they forgot. Or the waiters forgot. Don't give them tip if they forgot things. <laughs> Do give them tip like you forgot something. That's it, you know, the tip. Uh, tell them to put uh, like soy sauce out for you, you know, maki sauce. Maggi sauce tastes better than soy sauce. I'm sorry to say, but originally, originally it came from soya, but it tastes better because they put the, some flavor called maggi, the maggi plant in it, and it tastes so great. That's in Europe. I don't know if we have maggi plant here. Switzerland, they only have it, huh? Funny, can you imagine the soy sauce are discovered by, uh, invented by the Chinese, but the Swiss make it better. <laughs> yeah, you never know. Mm -hmm. I hope you're going to be a better master than I am. <laughs> of course you are better, sure. Of course you are better, because you have good training, mm -hmm. good discipline, yes. You'll be better, yes. <laughs> yeah. My master, he didn't have much chance to discipline me. I'm not in for it. <laughs> I discipline myself. <laughs> but you will be kinder to people. Everywhere you go, don't people praise you? Yeah? Don't people love you? Wherever you go, people like you so much. You know, I read sometimes report. They say, oh, the some people come to you because you look so happy and so kind. You know, whenever we go out lecture and you volunteer to distribute some flyers and all that, some people would tell me, my God, I came because they look so kind, so happy, and I wonder why. So I come to have a look why they are so happy. <laughs> and that's how I came to you, you see? Because you're so kind, so happy, and so disciplined, and so good, so good. That's why you can um, convince people to go back to the kingdom of God. And that is mastership. Mastership doesn't mean you sit here and have the Supreme Master title and blah, 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 about birds and dog stuff. <laughs> but the mastership is that people recognize you as something extraordinary, something above them, something that they have to learn. You see, then you are a teacher. If somebody look up to you as somebody who could teach them something that they don't have, that they don't know, then you are a teacher, no? You are a master, master of yourself. And from then on, the whole universe knows that you are. And the more you do it, the more you re realize yourself that you really are something, that you teach, not by words, but by action, by examples, by just yourself. Just your silly face is good enough to attract people already. <laughs> you don't even talk, yes? Yeah, I read some reports say that the people keep coming back and forth many times. I didn't want to take the flyer. And you are far away even, but because you're so happy, you radiate this happiness, so attractive that they couldn't resist. Finally, they have to come and take the flyer and then come to the lecture. You see how incredibly powerful you are, and you don't even know it. And that's a good thing. <laughs> ah, good thing you don't know. <laughs> yeah. Many people that distribute flyers outside, but they don't look happy, so people don't know, they don't want to take it. But you radiate this happiness from inside even. So even from far away, people can feel it and see it. Yeah? So that's, that's a good thing that you don't know that you're powerful. Because uh, like this, you don't even have the ego. Who needs it? Huh? We need the power, but not the ego. So you're cool. Uh, the more you do things, the more it reflects on you, and then you will realize how powerful you are, no? Do you realize? No? Uh, 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 no ego, right? Okay, cool. <laughs> if you can say yes, you should say yes, it's all right. <laughs> you worry your neighbor tell you you have ego or something. <laughs> oh my God, you're not only powerful, you're clever. <laughs> oh my God, uh, I don't know how to treat you better because every time I see you, I feel so humble. 
I don't look it, but I am. <laughs> I'm the most humble person on the whole planet. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm so humble, I worry you don't know. I have to tell you. <laughs> okay. Anyway, what I mean, I really mean it. When you came from all over the world and going through all obstacles and defeating all obstructions to come here, you know, I feel very humble. I feel very humble and very respectful to you and very touched. I, every time I don't know how to treat you better. So you see, I always ask you silly questions like, are you warm enough? <laughs> Your food good is because I really feel that I don't know what else to do for you. I I wish I could do something better, but it's not it's not it's not materially always uh, 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 feasible. Mm, that's all. But in my heart, I really have so much love, respect for you, because it's easy for me perhaps to come here and sit and talk, but it's not easy always to all of you, because you have work. I, I have work too, but I'm not as worldly bound like you are, you know, your boss, your office, your work. Sometimes you want to go, but they don't let you go. Sometimes you want to go, your work don't let you go. Even your boss wants you to go, your work don't let you go, but you defeat them all, you do something, <laughs> and you pray, <laughs> and then everything, everything goes smoothly. Yeah, but you must have the will to, you see? When there's a will, there's a way. You must really want it. And what do you want? Nothing. Just come and sit here so that you can hear me telling you you're a good boy. <laughs> and good girl. <laughs> and scratch my tongue too. <laughs> yeah. You're so good. You become so good, so innocent, so pure like those pets that I have. Yes. All you want is just me scratch your stomach <laughs> and tell you that you're a good boy, good girl, that's all. Yes, you want nothing really from me and from anyone. You could have gone on holiday with all the money you spent. Yeah, you could go a shorter trip, enjoy holiday, have caviar, whiskey, get drunk, poison yourself, whatever. <laughs> but you came here. No, honestly, I mean, even though those things are poisons, but for worldly people, they are heaven, you see. So for you to forsake all this and to spend wisely on your spiritual nourishment, you must be really saint. You must be a very enlightened person. Your heart must be so pure and simple that you, you know these things. Because these things for us is a simple life, but it's not simple to li live such a simple life like us. No, you have to really be pure at heart. Like Jesus say, except uh, you become pure as a children, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. This is kingdom of God. This is our kingdom of God inside that prompts us to do this. Only saintly person can forsake those worldly pleasure. Can only only saintly people, enlightened people, would know that these worldly pleasures are really cause of disaster, even though they really are. But they don't know. They want it. So for for you guys to even step up to this knowledge, this is incredible. And you came here, you spend your hard-earned money just to come here to meditate for world peace, for the universe, for yourself to know yourself, to improve yourself, and to see me. That is really a oh, precious friendship, apart from that you want to improve yourself. Yes. I am always humble in your presence, even though I don't act like it. I never act humble. <laughs> what for? <laughs> I'm the most humble person already. <laughs> Everybody knows that. <laughs> it's on TV. <laughs> no, uh, last time, uh, remember one sister, just now we talked about, one sister told me that I, I, look, I look humble before, more humble or something like that, right? What did she say? I look more humble, right? And now I'm more confident or something? It's wrong. At that time, I look only humble, 
Now I really am humble. <laughs> Yes, there's a difference between being humble and look humble. At that time, I had to look humble. <laughs> I had nobody to boast about anything. <laughs> no, it just uh, it's okay. I learned to look humble from everybody else. But true humility came from inside, and you you feel it when somebody is humble or not. Yeah, when somebody is egoless or not. Yeah, no matter how, how, how good he acts, sometimes he cannot fool you too well. Not for a long run, hey? Yeah. Okay, well, my goodness, it's time to eat? <laughs> Almost? <laughs> it's, it's good. What do you mean, no? I see you later again. In different dress. Don't you like to see me in different dress? <laughs> uh, no, actually. I bought, I, I didn't tell them to, so I bought my own clothes, you know, like some simple wear like you, warm and casual. But when I come here, all my clothes look like peasant, <laughs> or look like nothing, because they buy all this and hang in there all beautifully, and I can't resist. <laughs> so I throw my suitcase on the, in the corner and lock it, <laughs> and wear this, of course. Who wouldn't like to wear new clothes, huh? Huh? Even the emperor, he has so many clothes, he likes to wear the new clothes, <laughs> right? My dogs love new clothes too, can you imagine? That's something I forgot to tell you. Mm. Every time they, after they came to the, you know, like a grooming shop, the shop would decorate them with ribbons and a scarf. You cannot take it off from them. <laughs> they let you take it off, examine a little, but then they put their head back in. You know, it's mine, I like it. And they wear it until they're torn out and dirty and I, I have to wait until they sleep to take it off and throw it away because it smell. Yeah, all the saliva of each other. Ew. And the dirt that they, they roll all over outside in my garden and all that stuff, but they love this scarf, my God. It become, you know, like ribbons already, but they hang on to it. So I have to buy some clothes for them sometimes, you know, like T-shirt for kids. Wear it on own, they love, they love. Oh, they walk around differently, you know. <laughs> and don't you dare take it off. <laughs> My God. So believe me, dogs, animals, they all have feelings like us. Very much so, very much so. When you hurt them sometimes, they, they cry. Sometimes, you know, I, I one day, I don't know, I can't remember so many things. They, I, sometimes, for example, because they sleep with me, you know, and they're all over me. I don't have a place anymore. I give them already two-thirds of the bed. I had to buy a king-size bed because I don't have any more place. They want to run all over and sleep with me. Okay, fine, especially the orphans. I treat them more special. And the elder one, you know, because I don't have longer to enjoy, so I, I let them sleep with me. Sleep only, but not run all over on my chest and sleep on my legs and, uh, you know, foot on my shoulders everywhere, you know, and I cannot sleep all night. So sometimes I was mad, you know, I said, this is your place, go back there. <laughs> and he cried. <laughs> yeah, cried so long and I was thinking something wrong with him. He really cried like that. I was something so wrong. I said, and then I worry. I said, what's wrong, honey? What's wrong? Are you sick? I see. And then <laughs> <laughs> smiling and licking me all over. And nothing wrong anymore. I can't believe it. He really cries, you know, you can feel the sadness. And then I realize he cries. So I said, it's okay, honey, it's okay, my God. I'm just in a bad mood, okay? You sleep where your bed is. I already put extra bed on my bed for them. You know why? Because uh, some dogs have big hair, some dogs small hair. And if I have air con on for the hair dog, the other dog may be cold. So I put the bed with the row, with the pillow and all that, so they can warm, because I cannot keep putting blanket on them forever. They kick them out. And then they run under my blanket. And worse still, sleep on top of my blanket, so I cannot cover myself. 
without waking everybody up and then go lick lick all over on the face again after I shower already many times and wash my face again and again. So you know what I mean, so like that. So I have the bed, so that the, the round bed with the head pillow so they can comfortably and preserve the heat for the, the short hair one. And the long hair, he, he, <sighs> he don't need anything. He need the cold marble floor put on top of my bed, that's what it is. The long hair one is sleep downstairs. He, he will run down to the floor after a while. So whoever like to sleep on bed, stay there. But I want to make sure that when I sleep, they're warm, you see? Because we are different temperature. Uh, so I say, you sleep on your bed, and it's good. It's an expensive bed. It's like $300. More expensive than my, 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 uh, my mattress. My mattress costs only $38, I told him. So you should be, you know, happy and honored. It's not like I insult you or anything. It's the best dog bed that I buy for you. It had magnet and thing, all that stuff to, to kill your backache and <laughs> keep you warm, keep you healthy, everything. My bed don't even have that. The mattress is a cheap one from Home Depot, whatever. <laughs> And then I talk to him, and she feel better, but still, still my bed and my legs are much better than his own pillow. They use me as a pillow. <laughs> uh, so, but they get hurt, you know, they get hurt. Oh my God, I never saw a dog cry before. I didn't know dog can cry. They might bark, they might whine, but they cry. <gasps> They cry just like you cry. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh, so be gentle to your animals, okay? Now be gentle to your stomach. Eat a lot. <laughs> Good food. So. I love you. Now, you know the difference between me and the Buddha or not? I mean, the Sakyamuni Buddha, he doesn't have a purse like this. <laughs> he wouldn't dream of it. See, it's good to be a woman, you can carry a purse. Not just any purse. It's a microwave magnetic electronic purse. Oh, it's beautiful, look at this. Now I could put some hundred dollars in here too, you know, and makeup, it's big. Wow, okay, I'm very shy now, sitting here like this. <laughs> I mean, caught unguarded like this, you know. I was coming out to have a dinner. Yeah, because I didn't have breakfast, I didn't have lunch. I didn't have dinner. <laughs> <laughs> no, I ate late last night, though. You know, after I saw you here at 2 o'clock, because I say I didn't have anything to eat, they just give me a mi yahoo, what a mi mi hoo hoo. <laughs> and I, you know, it's too sweet. So I, they heard me and then they come and cook something. It was delicious. It was congee. You know, um, Vietnamese congee. And some, oh, something they cook good. There were two, two beautiful kids here. They cook so good, so good that uh, my uh, attendant, he, she fired all, all the cooks. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
the O and try and trust the cooks, all get fired. <laughs> because these two girls, she's so young, I think 16 or something only, They're still in junior high. They cook so good. Yeah. Tastes so delicious. Maybe they cook with love. Well, actually, love is not enough. You must have a mother who is an excellent cook as well. And you have to, to really want to learn, you know, all the secret, a little bit here, a little bit there. One little ingredient missing. The food is not the same. So uh, sometimes, uh, even though, you know, you study the recipe, but you don't have the chef next to you and to tell you, it's a little bit here and a little bit there. You know, because mostly the recipe, they would tell you, two average carrots. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, four tomatoes, <laughs> but you don't know what is average carrot. <laughs> you know how how big is the average, <laughs> and how is the uh, four ordinary tomato? You know, I mean something like that. And if you buy a little bigger tomato or smaller carrot, then it won't taste the same. The the the, the oh, talking about food <laughs> <laughs> and smell as well from the kitchen. Oh, it's killing my stomach. Uh, well, we have to pass time somehow, so we talk about it instead. Huh? <laughs> Better than nothing. <laughs> so uh, if you buy a little different, huh, or you put just a little tiny bit, less salt or more salt, or a little one or a few more drops, uh, more uh, soy sauce, it tastes uh, different. Hmm? So uh, for your reference, I really taste many people cook from my so-called recipe. I won't recognize it at all. This one cooked different, that one cooked different. Ah, my goodness. And after all, I say, hey, don't ever mention my name when you cook this. <laughs> People will not buy my book or will not even talk to me <laughs> if you cook like this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, similarly, huh? We, the practitioner, now it comes to serious matter, huh? Not just food, huh? You know me, huh? <laughs> this is just for the bait. <laughs> Similar to us, huh? We, the practitioners, huh? Not just sit there, huh? We have all kinds of things. We have uh, theory to study. We have re uh, uh, precepts to keep. Hmm? And we have meditation, yeah, to practice. We also have, huh? Oh, sure, sure, we have master to see, that's also, <laughs> that's a bonus, yeah. Uh, but we also have uh, action, see? To put into action what we have learned, yes, and to exercise our wisdom and power of uh, spiritual achievement, yeah? And the compassion we have developed together along with the spiritual improvement. See? Therefore, we do many things. We not just sit there. Yeah? We sit there, we contemplate on the most height, we uh, connect with the power which is within ourselves, which is the highest of all being. But then, we also keep our moral standard high. Yeah? We be a good person, be a good boy and a good girl. Yes. And then, from the uh, spiritual power inside, we develop love and compassion, eh? and wisdom also. Wisdom, so that we live a more comfortable life, and we live a simple living. And from simple living, we don't have to work as hard as before, but earn even more. Because one penny saved is one penny earned. You understand? So now you live more simple. You have more money than before, even though you work same job. Nah? Or maybe work less busy job, because you can organize your life. You can be contented with whatever life gives without wanting more and more things, cost you more trouble, more headache, more money. More money means more work. Yeah? More work means more health consuming, more time consuming, more energy wasted. Instead of having time to meditate and direct energy to the good cause, we have to waste it on earning money and uh, paying tax more because we earn more or have to take care more, pay in more account and blah, 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 because we too much work, yeah? So now that we have simple life, you see, we have more time. More time means more meditation, uh, more wisdom. More time also means more charitable action, 
yeah, more happiness to everyone around us and for ourselves. You see, yeah, more time also means less work, yeah, more healthy, yeah, more time for family members, yeah, more happiness within marriage and family. You see, you see, so much good come out of this spiritual practice. If the whole world people know, they would forsake everything except to do meditation and follow our way of life because this is really the only way of life that we should follow. Not that we forsake every other, other way of life, but by following this way of life, we improve in every other way of life and we uh, enhance all kind of other way of life that we couldn't have time for it before. No? So, when you uh, uh, have work less, you have more health, and even save more money. More money means you could go and retreat sometimes and re uh, recuperate your spiritual um, and your health, your spiritual uh, stand and your health stand, your health, um, I would say, uh, uh, state, yeah, okay. And then the money you save, you can help other people, you see? Before, you thought you don't have money to even do charity work. Now, look, uh, you do everywhere. Nah? You help America, you help Argentina, you help Chile, you help uh, Afghanistan, you help... Uh, what, honey? Africa. Africa, yes, yes. You have everywhere, huh? And look at the same money you earned before. Not only you can help, but you can help time for yourself so that you can even recover yourself for anything that you have lacked during busy hours of working, serving the world, né? and more and more. And you become wiser, more kind, kinder, yeah? more affectionate, more loving, more tolerant, more understanding. So much, so much more have become of you. You become richer and richer, you know, both inside, outside, yes? And you look even better also, younger, stay long younger, stay younger long and have less illness. Even if you have illness, quick recovery, yeah? Everything is so good, so good. Just because it's a good way of life. And the only way of life, the kingdom of God's way of life. Follow the kingdom of God, seek the kingdom of God and everything will come into fulfillment. Am I right? Yes. 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 Yeah. So this is the practice of the Bible and the Buddhist doctrine. There's nothing else to do but to practice it, see? The Buddha emphasized compassion, wisdom, mm, love. You have it all. Jesus emphasized the kingdom of God, of course. Love thy neighbor, yeah. The kingdom of God, love the enemy. Kingdom of God means you have wisdom. Yeah, you achieve kingdom of God. You contact kingdom of God means you are wise, like God or God-like at least. Yeah, or toward God, more and more toward God. So you you have it all. Whatever Bible name demand or emphasize, you have it. You see, the more you practice this, the more you have it. And that's how you look happy, 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 just to see the same old woman again, again, and again. <laughs> just five minutes ago, you can see her again. <laughs> and if I let you come to my house every day, I'm sure you would. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I don't know, maybe it's good also to see each other sometimes only. Huh? So you can recover yourself, have time for yourself also, no? <laughs> because otherwise, well, what do we do every day if we see each other every day? And we become like marriage couple, just quarrel. <laughs> quarrel over kids or dogs or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I always want you. No problem. Huh? No matter what. It's okay. Forget yourself and you'll be healed. <laughs> All right? <laughs> oh, we'll talk about that. Just, just, just forget it, forget it. My goodness. Ten years and you have not improved because you don't do anything and you just want blessing. Here you are. Are you okay? I don't know. You j no, no, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. Yes, okay. No, no, you stay here. <laughs> Uh, 
Only good people should go in the kitchen and cook. Understand this? If you think too much of yourself and you think you have too much problem, you stay away from the kitchen. All right? Mm -hmm. If you forget yourself, you recover better. If you always concentrate on yourself, you'll be in more trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. You have left me a long time, that's why. Just came back, it doesn't recover so quick. Hmm? Just continue this way. <laughs> Đi bỏ sư phụ mấy năm rồi, lại rồi thành ra nó... Thôi, thôi, tự nhiên, tự nhiên. <cười> Cứ tiếp tục tu thì nó hết. Đừng có phải bỏ, chạy tới chạy lui hoài. Thì bỏ Phật thì ma nó lại, chứ giờ ai nữa. Trong thế giới này chỉ có hai, hai người thôi. <cười> Một là Phật, hai là ma. Hả? Mình theo Phật thì ma nó không có lại, mình theo ma Phật không có lại. Ừ. Yeah. Wow. You understand Vietnamese? Cool. I told her she should not continue leaving me and come back now and again like that just because she had problem before and she came or and then she left me many years and she just came back recently so it didn't go so quick yeah it doesn't it re doesn't recover like that so quick because uh, the, the girl said this is my person my house you know and the buddha will not force anybody to come out of the house unless he's willing so it takes some time Uh, I say there will. She should not, uh, you know, leave, because if she leaves, then the ghost will come. <laughs> because I say there are only two forces in this world: uh, Buddha and the negative Maya. Uh, if you follow the Buddha, the negative Maya cannot come. If you follow the Maya, the Buddha will not come. So it's only two choice. Uh, very easy. Make up your mind, and you'll be cool. Yeah. Uh? Otherwise, also you keep coming, going, coming, going, and confuse your mind too, ne? Yes. You should have become better already if she stick to this path, but she left. <laughs> anyway, all right. It's, I, I don't blame you. I'm just trying to make you better. Yeah, but you have to let me, ne? You have to let me. If you don't listen to the doctor and take the medicine, how can you blame the doctor or how can you get better? No? Eh? Okay. Mm. Especially, you know, these are a good doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I also go to recommended doctors. You know, for my animals also. Yeah. Unless, but sometimes you cannot always choose, so you go to any emergency. But it's okay for normal things. But if you know he's a good doctor, you go there, right? Yes, every area have some good doctor who is famous, who is good, who is kind, who is a cool hand, yeah, cool handed. That means a good one, and you can always trust. Then you should go there, huh? Mm. Because sometimes you go to uh, not too good doctor. He doesn't know how to treat you very well. He could treat a common cold, perhaps, but uh, if you he cannot treat something deeper, then you're wasting your time and money all the time. And not only that, you waste your health and you endanger yourself. Huh? Okay. Spiritual practice is not a joke. Huh? If uh, if you have chosen a path and you know it's right, stick to it. Yeah. If not, of course, then you go back to <laughs> uh, the dangerous, uh, uh, not really just kind of overwhelming negative power somewhere else. Then of course there is a consequence. Huh? Mm. It's better you come back than never. It's, it's good. So, but uh, be patient. Huh? It's okay to shop around, but don't shop too long, because you don't look too long, you have nothing. Your stomach <laughs> empty, you know? You keep looking and don't buy nothing. Huh? <laughs> also, we have problem. When we shop too much, we go outside, we buy anything except the thing we need. And finally, we realize we think we need the shop clothes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah or we go out, you know, go without food. Yeah. It's, it happens, huh? When we go to the supermarket, we are so dissipated, so attracted by all kinds of things handy by, you know? Even before you pay at the cashier, they also put all kind of small, small things handy next to it. Chocolate, all those tempting things, you know. Even horoscope books, <laughs> chewing gum, cigarette, you know, anything small, small that you cannot resist. They put it everywhere already. But next to the cashier, they do put things. And then you keep, you know, buying and buying and buying. And when you come home, you buy so many things that you don't even buy the thing that you need because you forgot it. Hmm? It happens, huh? So don't shop too long, huh? <laughs> Make sure you focus on what you want in life. What you want, okay? Not what they buy, not what they sell. If what you want 
is uh, realizing how great you are and get in touch with your true self. Then you have to go where the shop where they sell this thing. <laughs> hey, there's a Supreme Master Ching Hai shop. Uh, I I heard that she sells this stuff. Guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> Satisfaction, money back guarantee. You know why? Because you don't have to pay anything. <laughs> no need money back. No. What I mean, this is guarantee forever. For eternal use, you see? Mm. <laughs> Most of the stuff they don't guarantee. Yeah, awesome stuff they guarantee one month, two weeks, one year, two years, but not guarantee forever like this. Yeah, so it should be good. Huh? Especially you don't even have to pay for it. Huh? Mm. Oh, my God. Now you can tell from who is selling the real stuff or from, from, from the, the, the not real stuff, right? Can you tell now already? Yeah. Yes, huh? when you listen to somebody talk, you know who's who, huh? Yeah. My God, it's so clear. Talking about the same stuff, but it's not the same. Yeah. How come, huh? So clear, you can't even explain it. Just you know this guy don't know anything, what he's talking about. <laughs> he just talk about milk, but he never drink. For example, huh? He talk about cookies, which he never ate. For example, like that. But we know the guy who ate the cookie. Hmm? You know the guy who drank the milk that he advertised. Uh, by the way, milk, milk is not all that great, huh? You can drink soya milk or, you know, other things. Almond milk, oh, that's a good too, eh? Milk is not all that good. I heard many bad things about milk. Besides, they're only like 30%, 20-something percent uh, calcium anyway. There are many other better calcium than milk. Yeah? yeah, you can you can read it in library. You know they have probably reference to calcium source. Many things you you do research, okay, and then you take what is tasty for you, because not all the calcium source tastes good. So you better choose your brand, eh? I'm not here to advertise for that. I got no commission. I'm not silly. <laughs> I don't work for no money. <laughs> No, it's, it's it's very easy outside. You 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 can see it on TV or on a newspaper. Yeah, you know what. Uh, the way they treat cows is what I don't really like. I I have nothing against milk, but the way they they do things to animals are too much. Not only they eat them, it's okay. Okay, I could I could uh, understand people eat animal when they have nothing else to eat or they're not used to. They don't know anything else. But why they have to? Make animals suffer so much, so much that it brought tears to your eyes if you know about it. You know, I don't dare read newspapers or research or things so much anymore. I'm so scared. Cause when I read them, I couldn't sleep. You know, I know everything is ephemeral and illusion and all that. But to the being who is concerned at that time, it's not an illusion. It's real pain. The way they do it, you know, is so inhuman. It's so immoral. It's terrible. So it's good that we don't have anything to do with it, with our conscience is clean. Yeah? We don't live just for food, no. We have to live for conscience, yeah? for feeling good and um, feeling happy and bringing happiness to everyone else as well. Yeah? Not selfishly, just uh, cut everything down, no matter what and where it comes from and how it is got there. My good, I wish, um, I wish the uh, every government of the world would have more program on airing these or making more public, cheaply public, you know, or free. Of course, all this information about health and you know hygiene standard, because most of the food, the meat that we eat and fish all that, they carry a lot of sickness. For example, I read that the the most of the animal at the time of slaughtering, they have seventy percent. Seventy percent of them have pneumonia. Oh. Yeah, because they've been raised in such a cold area, concrete floor, and been wet and dirty all the time, and together. So when one got it, the other got it too, no? About the same condition anyway. Apart from treating the animal cruelly, we also endanger ourselves. You see what I mean? By eating the, 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 the bacteria laden meat and unhygienically treated meat, all these things is no good for humans. No wonder that the more and more hospitals are built all the time. 
And people who build hospital are highly praised, and also highly charged. Also, <laughs> they highly charge us too. You know, once you go in hospital, there's no end to bill. You know, keep sending all the time, all the time. My goodness, I have to go to hospital sometime in America. And I'm so scared. I'm so, I don't know how other people can afford it. You know. They keep sending bills like forever. Every time we scared. Oh, another one again. I don't know where I come from. <laughs> Every little thing. <laughs> it's okay, but you know, I mean, if you really uh, take care of your hygiene, huh? not only you're not sick yourself, you don't infect other people who are healthy. That's the thing. It's not fair, is it? Yeah, it's not fair for us. Also, the people who eat all this bad thing and infected us sometimes because we are vulnerable. Also, all of us are vulnerable. Eh? This is not fair. Eh? It's, it's not only we, we eat uh, meat, uh, we infect ourselves and make ourselves sick, but we make family members sick, you know? We deplete the family members' uh, bank accounts, yeah? And we uh, uh, transmit this disease to whoever we uh, happen to go nearby. Yeah? Talk to our nose, or cough. Some people cough right into your nose, you know? Yeah, when I'm sick, I wear a mask. Uh, people think I'm weird, but I just want to protect other people. And when I go through the airport, I take it off. I say, I'm sorry, I'm sick. Don't look too near. Here, I, this is what I look. <laughs> you know, you have to show your face, of course, but you explain to them why, and they're okay. Yeah, the Singapore airport, they like me. They say, oh, you are good, good, good. Yeah, all passengers should do that to protect us. Because sometimes the, the inspector or the immigration officer, he talks to you. And some people are very tall and they lean on the counter and they talk right into his nose. So if he's sick, you know, he flu or something, that poor officer has to bear it. You know, and he has work to do. He had over, over time work to do already, and he has family to feed. He has kids to take care of. You understand? He's not just an officer sitting there and making trouble for you. He has a life. For example, see? And this is just one example, you know. We infect each other all the time. And that's why we, we wear masks here, you know. So please don't complain, huh? When you wear a mask, you put it into your nose, not just your mouth. Your nose, because you breathe you know, bacteria into the food if you're sick. Sometimes you're sick, you don't know, and you infect the whole group. That's why you eat food here, you don't feel much trouble, huh? Okay, but protect yourself also from the cold, okay? Hey, it's really five o'clock now. <laughs> four o'clock. But it's so five. Is it four or five? Four. four. And then look at it. Look at my watch. <laughs> See? See, I'm not making an excuse. It's really five o'clock. See this? Yeah. Some enlightened idiot had put it here. <laughs> I'm shaking it and you go back to four again. <laughs> okay. They forgot, you see. I'm just joking. There's no idiots around me. All these stupid people. <laughs> they just forgot, you see, because they're resident. They don't need time here. Time doesn't exist in this planet here for them. This is planet of the no, a planet of the saints. Yeah? They don't have time. They don't care. Yeah? They sleep, they eat, they go meditate, everything just uh, in here. You know, they don't eat any time, so they don't care. That's what happened. In my house, they put 10 clocks, all different timing. <laughs> I never know anymore. And sometimes I grab one, you know, make sure that it's right, and then put it right into my bed. But tomorrow, they clean up and then change it. You know, for I change a different clock, it's more pleasant. <laughs> so master don't have to look at the same clock all the time. What a kindness. And then I'm, I'm late for appointment and all that stuff again because I don't know what time. I thought it's the same one, for example. But I tell them, please change it. And then they change only two or three. And the rest is the same. So if I'm in this room, I'm in this time. If I go to another, <laughs> another room, it's another dimension. <laughs> Who cares, right? I'm all, always in a Thai warp. <laughs> okay, let's have a good dinner and good appetite. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.